The Big Con. The Big Con. On Apple TV Plus. This is one of the craziest people who pulled off one of the biggest scams in American history. We are looking for Eric Con for defrauding the U.S. taxpayer of more than $550 million. Eric Kahn was one of the biggest lawyers here in Appalachia. Part of the story that I think is going to be a big surprise to a lot of people is the stakes. The town loved him and the people loved him. He was a phenomenon. Eric Kahn was Mr. Social Security. He was on the radio. He was on television. This is an advertisement for Eric C. Kahn. We laughed at him, you know, but everybody wanted to meet him. You can understand why so many people were drawn to him. He has this charisma. He has this charm. He's so likable. The way he did it was incredible, and there was porn stars and voodoo dolls and Rolls Royces and flashy suits and brothels. He opened a Halloween-themed brothel. And he's getting filthy rich off the whole thing. A bala in eastern Kentucky. There was three investigations happening at once. Bad judges, bad lawyers, bad doctors. There are some really powerful women behind this, the whistleblowers, uh, Sarah Carver and Jennifer Griffith, and they tried to blow the whistle and get this case known for years. And no one listened to them. There were times during the course of our whistleblowing that we were retaliated against. My tires had been slashed with a knife. These were bad, bad people. I would never want another whistleblower to go through what we went through. I lived in fear of going to work. While these two women, Sarah and Jennifer, were blowing the whistle, it was falling on deaf ears for years. The only thing government hates more than a rapist or a child molester is a tax evader. We're like, freeze! Eric was planning his biggest caper yet.
The story started with uh, one of the other executive producers on this project, Peter King, came to us when we were just finishing up working on McMillions and said, I, I heard about this crazy lawyer in this small town in eastern Kentucky, jet sets around the world, has Bentleys, Rolls Royces, but also basically stole $550 million from the U.S. government. When Eric got busted, one of the craziest things that happened in the story was that all the claimants, everyone who went to him, lost their benefits overnight. And they were also told you have to pay back all of your past disability. Uh, so for some of these people, it was you know close to $100,000, which you know you, when you're making like $900 a month, like you're barely surviving. Every single month, he would fly to some random place around the world and usually would find a new wife when he was there. People coming into the documentary series might feel one way about Eric in episode one, and they might feel a completely different way in episode four. So we're excited to see how people react to him overall. The big takeaways from the big con uh, ultimately are the fact that you know, there are these two whistleblowers that stood up against a large government entity. They didn't have to, that actually put them in harm's way, yet it really shows that you should stand up for what's right no matter what the cost. It also shows just a fantastic way of how and why the news exists, why media exists, because while these two women, Sarah and Jennifer, were blowing the whistle, it was falling on deaf ears for years. I'm Damian Paletta, and in 2011, I was the Wall Street Journal reporter who first broke the story of Eric Kahn and Judge Doherty. I, I describe myself as like the person who pulled the Jenga block out, and it all kind of came crashing down after. This was the biggest uh, disability scam in American history. I think the federal government was reluctant to look into this because, you know, they needed these cases to be processed. There were so many people waiting for benefits. But when, you know, the press shined a light on how corrupt things were, they were, they were requ almost required to act because Congress got really upset about it. And so it took, you know, the media to really look into this in order for them to act. As you can see from this show, the kind of twists and turns and the chain of events are really, really powerful. I'm one of the whistleblowers featured here in the Big Con. I was one of the people that discovered that disability cases were being potentially decided fraudulently. I would never want another whistleblower to go through what we went through. I, I mean, I, you can't, you wouldn't wish that on your worst enemy, to nearly lose everything that you have just to make sure that somebody knows something is wrong. It's not, it's not right. Not only did our local managers retaliate against us and push us out of good paying government jobs, regional and headquarters knew what was happening and did nothing. This man should have been disbarred long before any of his clients were ceased benefits. If any one person had taken action after we started reporting in 2005, we would not be here today, we would not be having this conversation. All it would have taken is one person. The story of Eric C. Khan and the fraud he perpetrated on the U.S. government and and all the all of us taxpayers is is a story that needs to be told. He unveiled the. Um, I guess you could say the activity um, between um, Social Security Administration, the judges, and with the attorney, Eric Kahn. There were times um, during the course of uh, our whistleblowing that we were retaliated against, tires slashed, brake lines slashed, people following us, so it, it, it got really tense. I think that there are some really powerful women behind this, the whistleblowers, uh, Sarah Carver and Jennifer Griffith, and they tried to blow the whistle and get this case known for years, and no one listened to them.